Hey, great morning. We are back for our uh, next um, daily lesson on geometry topics. Today we're going to look at everybody's favorite, at least it's mine, uh, one of my favorites, the Pythagorean Theorem. I'm just going to get this screen adjusted. Yeah, that'll work. Good enough, right? Close enough for government work. So Pythagorean Theorem, we are going to be focusing in on right triangles today. Right triangles, again, have a single 90 degree uh, angle, and that will always be the largest angle within um, that triangle. Pythagorean Theorem states that a squared plus b squared will always equal c squared, and a and b are the two what we call legs of the right triangle. They are the two shorter sides. They always meet at the 90 degree or right angle. So that's where the right angle is formed, where A and B meet each other. A and B are interchangeable. You can flip-flop. A doesn't have to be the shortest leg. B does not have to be the longest. They can you know, be either or. But side C is always diagonally across from that 90 degree right angle. That is known as the hypotenuse, and that is your longest side in a right triangle. So we are going to use the Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to give you two of the three side lengths in a right triangle, and then your job is to find the missing third side length uh, using inverse operations to find that value. So in example one, I've got my two legs, A is 5, B is 12, or you could say A is 12, B is 5, either way. And then C, your hypotenuse, is X. So I'm going to just go right ahead and plug in A squared plus B squared will equal, I don't know, squared, C squared. So 5 squared is 25, 12 squared, 144, that will equal c squared. So I'm going to have 169 equals c squared. To get c alone now, we know that to undo a square, we will square root both sides. Now technically, c, the hypotenuse, could be positive and negative 13. However, since we are talking side length of a triangle, I am only going to use the positive square root because of this context. So 13 inches would be the length of the hypotenuse. Okay, let's take a look at example two. Here I have a right triangle. Notice that my hypotenuse I'm given in this case is 30. 18 could be A or B. I'll just call it A, and then x will be my b value. So I'll say 18 squared plus x squared will equal 30 squared. So 18 squared is 324 plus x squared will equal 30 squared 900. To get my variable alone, I'll first subtract 324 from both sides and have x squared equals 576. And then finally, to undo the square, I'll square root. And again, technically, there will be a positive negative answer, but we are only using the positive square root today since we are talking side lengths. Positive square root of 576 is 24. So 24 feet would be that height of the right triangle. Examples 3 and 4, we are going to have some non-integer, non-whole number uh, side lengths of a right triangle. So totally fine where we can round to the nearest hundredth. Two decimal places would be triple A. Okay. This is an isosceles right triangle since A and B, the two legs, are um, equal to each other. They are congruent, so two congruent side lengths would make that an isosceles right triangle. So A and B are congruent, so I'd go 7 squared plus 7 squared 
equals x squared. So 7 squared, 49. 7 squared is another 49. That'll equal x squared. 98 equals x squared. So when you square root, here's where you start scratching and maybe sniffing a little. Do I smell what that square root is going to be? Well, I don't know. Um, this might be a good time for a calculator. You crunch it out, I'm going to take a field trip and get mine. Sprint. How was that for a sprint? It was actually a saunter, kind of a slow walk. So I'm going to light up here and take 98 square root, and I'm going to get 9.899. So I'm going to say x is, since I'm rounding, I won't use exactly equal to. I'll use approximately equal to 9.90. Again, we're rounding to the nearest hundredth, two decimal places. All right, we'll have a similar look here on question four. However, I'm giving you C, the hypotenuse in this case, and then A and B are your legs. I'll give you one of the two. So we'll say A, 8 squared plus x squared will equal 12 squared. 8 squared, 64, plus x squared will equal 144. Subtracting 64 from both sides, I will have x squared is equal to 80. And then taking the square root, 80 square root, well, it's really close to 81, right? So it should be um, just below 81. So just below the square root of 81, which is 9, so just under 9. Let's light that up. 80's square root. We have x is about equal to 8.944. So since my next number is 4, I'll keep 94. The next set of examples here are checking whether or not the given side lengths form a right triangle. So you're just going to check does a squared plus b squared equal c squared. So does 3 squared plus 4 squared equal 5 squared? Does 9 plus 16 equal 5 squared 25? Yes, it does. 9 and 16 does equal 25. So I would just answer this question with a simple yes. Question 2, does 3 squared plus 5 squared equal 8 squared? Does 9 plus 25 equal 64. Uh, no, 34 does not equal 64, so I would say no for those three values. All right, a little curveball here for you on the 999 nine, nine square roots of 2. Does 9 squared plus 9 squared equal 9 times the square root of 2 squared? Kind of a goofy one. 9 squared is 81. 9 squared is 81. And then when I square something, remember, I multiply by itself. 9 square roots of 2 times 9 square roots of 2. 162 equal. So I'll multiply my outside terms, 9 times 9, 81. And then my inside terms, square root of 2, square root of 2 is square root of 4. Well, the square root of 4 is just 2. 81 times 2 is 162. So yeah, 162 equals itself. And this is an actually uh, a 45, 45, 90 special case, an isosceles right triangle. All right, for the trick question for today, notice that 13, 5, 12, if you just go A, B, C order, it's not always given to you in that, um, you know, ascending side length. Notice 13, the first number given is the longest side. And we said the longest side is always the hypotenuse. So if I need to plug in 13 for C, 5 and 12 for A and B. So does 5 squared plus 12 squared equal 13 squared? 
25 plus 144, 13 squared is 169. 25 and 144 also equals 169. So I would say yes for question four. All right, a couple of the word problems here. Please draw a picture. Draw it out. There's no better way. So we got a person traveling two miles north, three miles east, and then another two miles north. We want to know how far is the person from their starting point as the crow flies. So what that means is the straight line distance. How far is A to B? Well, what I'm going to do is put the two right triangles together and make one big right triangle. So my total distance traveled east is 3, and my total distance traveled north is 2, plus that 2, so I will get 4. So my equation will be a squared plus b squared, 3 squared plus 4 squared will equal x squared. 3 squared 9, 4 squared 16, that'll equal x squared. 9 and 16 is 25. And then when I square root both sides, 5 miles will be that straight line distance. Then take your little triangles, put them together in one, and you will definitely like the way that ends up. All right, our last one here. We've got a ladder that need, that is 10 feet long, and it needs to reach a window that is 8 feet above the ground. So here's my little house. I got a window. How's that for a ladder? I hope it's good. So my ladder here is 10 feet long. It needs to reach a window that is 8 feet above the ground. So how far away from the building should the bottom of the ladder be placed? So I'm trying to find this leg length, again across from the 90C is my hypotenuse, which is 10. So I'm going to say x squared plus 8 squared equals 10 squared. So x squared plus 64 equals 100. Subtract 64 from both sides. I'll have x squared equals 36. Square root both sides. And that missing length there, the base of the ladder should be six feet away from the bottom of the building. So that does it. It's a great day for a little Pythagorean theorem. Thank you, Pythagoras. You are my hero. Have a great day.